Hello Audacious Church. Um, if you don't know me, my name is John Shelton and welcome to today's devotion. I'm the area East Pastor for Audacious and it's an honour to be sharing with you today. Hasn't it been great over the last few weeks and months to have people from all across our different campuses bringing their encouragement from God's Word and my prayer is that um, this encourages you today to wherever or wherever you find yourself. Um, last time I did a devotion, I was on location at a reservoir in Saddleworth called Dovestones, and today I've brought you to the town of Duckingfield, and I'm stood on Park Road, and there's a very special reason for that, which I'll get to in a moment. So I've been asked to share um, a passage of scripture which has special meaning for me, and this psalm that I have chosen has been a special go-to part of God's word for me for a very very long time and it's Psalm 27. Um, David wrote this perhaps when he was being pursued by his many enemies before he ascended the throne. Some people say that he wrote it as a result of the tragic death of his parents. Um, Whatever the impetus was for him writing it, it doesn't really matter. All we do is we find here a man of God who is a real man He's going through some very real situations, um, he's facing some issues and he's taking them in faith to his very real God. I'd encourage you to read the whole of Psalm 27 today. If you can, you will not be disappointed. But for the purposes of this devotion, I'm going to just concentrate on the final two verses, which are these. I would have lost heart had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, for he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, um, I'm stood, as I said, in Duckingfield on Park Road. And the reason I've brought you here, I'm just going to pan round now, and you can see then over my left shoulder, you can see this Victorian mill holding into view there. This is River Mill um, in Duckingfield, and I worked here for about seven months when I was 18 years old. It was one of my first jobs, and every single one of the jobs that I did in that place was mundane. I hated every minute of it. I was having to do really, really, really crummy jobs where you didn't really need a brain to do it. You just got on with it. It was hard work. It was physical work. It was just mundane. Um, But I know that God was with me in that place, which I'll explain in a moment. Every single one of those floors was filled with with very, very noisy and loud machinery because at that time um, it was owned by a company called Greengate who made wooden um, components for furniture. So there was a lot of wood shavings and chippings and sawdust everywhere. And... um, the huge fans would suck the shavings and the chippings away from the machines into four huge chutes which ended up in the boiler room one in each of the four corners of the boiler room there was a hole in the ceiling and these four chutes would deposit their load of wood shavings and chippings on a regular basis and guess people who was in the boiler room yes yours truly stood in the middle of that room and with a shovel in my hand waiting for the next load I distinctly remember one very cold November day well it was cold outside but it was very very hot and and cramped and dirty inside and I'd just got to the bottom of the fourth pile I'd cleared the whole floor of shavings and I was just looking forward to resting my weary head onto my shovel and just having a breather and then well you've guessed it haven't you what happened three of the four fans rumbled into grisly life And all of a sudden, the floor, which was once very, very clean and just cleared, was once again full of shavings. And with tears in my eyes, um, I grabbed my shovel and I knew what I had to do. And I remember distinctly, like it was yesterday, um, in that 
in that room as I shoveled, I declared this psalm out loud. I could, I could hear it now echoing round the room. And as I got to these final two verses, I shouted as I shoveled because I knew that God was with me in that trial. I knew that he would bring me through it. All I had to do was to keep my eyes and my heart fixed on him, to wait on him. And at that moment, I felt, I think, just exactly how David felt felt when um, he cried out to God in Psalm 27 because sometimes it's only when we are at our lowest that we can experience God's highest. That place was was um, foundational in my life because if you fast forward just seven months I found myself in Bible college and um, this mill behind me and the experiences I had there were just a memory but in that moment when when I was working there God was doing something deep he was building my character he was helping me to understand that my worth and my value and my purpose was not felt in a job or with a career or a family or a house or a car he was calling me and helping me to understand that my value and my purpose is only found in him he was he was encouraging me to say that even though I was going through a really hard time that my best days were indeed ahead and I'm living that life now because this has been a go-to passage for me throughout my life through its ups and its downs through its thick and its thin from its joy and its sorrow I've learned by God's grace to wait and understand that that my best days are ahead and my friend, if you're listening to this this morning, your best days are ahead too. I want you to believe that with me today, that whatever you're walking through, if you're walking through the shadow valley, if you feel like God's a million miles away, if you feel like you've, you've lost your sense of purpose or mojo, I want you to turn today to God, to look to him and say, I would have lost heart had I not believed you were, that we would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living God. Your deliverer will come through. All we need to do is wait. And the depth of character and experience, this testimony that is being forged in your test right now, will be the encouragement for so many people in the future. And you will be the answer to someone else's prayers. Just like I hope that my story today has been an encouragement to you and brought hope to you in your situation. So whatever, whatever you're shoveling today, however you feel as you shovel it today, I want you with me to look up and understand that if it's not good, it's not the end. God is at work. God is at work. And all we need to do is wait for him. And today's tweet is, God is always, always, always worth waiting for. I want you to have a fantastic day because God is with you. God is in you. And look up today and understand that your best days, your very best days are ahead. Have the, um, the most fantastic day and I'll be back very, very soon. God bless you.